And now please welcome to the stage DARPA electrical engineer, Bill Chappell. All right, let's talk about the foundation of modern society, the electromagnetic spectrum. So when we first fundamentally changed society forever, right, it was through broadcast, one-way transmissions of information that unified our society together with a common narrative had unintended consequences. Like I had to wake up on Saturday morning to watch my cartoons. Right? Since then, we've gotten significantly better. Right? With, since when I was young till today, right, we've had an exponential growth of 4.4 exabytes per month. Now that's the sum total of all the spoken words of, in mankind's history, packaged together and retransmitted through the airwaves each single month. And we got there through an era of isolation. This era of isolation was smaller cells, directional radiation, and frequencies that were separated from each other. And it's worked quite well. You can actually see the simplicity if we look at the frequency plan of your flip phone from a decade ago. So 2003, you open up your system, and it looks like this. It's very simple. If you buy a common phone today, right, it looks more like this. If you look at what standards are being developed in the lab today, which projects what your next system will look like, it looks like this, and at DARPA, we are actually on dis showing on display uh, systems that look like this. We will have broad access to the full range of the electromagnetic spectrum. Our hardware will have the capability, but it transfers the problem from that hardware to the underlying complexity management. So where do we turn? Well, it turns out you and I face this problem every day. We're going to talk about scarce resources, the scarcest of uh, spectrum resources is your audio spectrum. This entire conference will be, be operated uh, in 20 kilohertz and below, which is one one millionth of one Wi-Fi band, yet somehow we get along. So if you look at any complex social scene, you'll see there's no master of ceremonies, there's no policy decision maker that says you speak in the tone of E and you speak in the tone of A. Right? Instead. We have independent actors making decisions based on real-time information, based on the context of everything which is around them. The problem is our machines don't have that context, and they don't have the intelligence to act upon it. But at DARPA, right, we're paving that way. We start with a program which we call RadioMap. RadioMap gives us the information of where transmitters are and at what frequency. Right? It tells us where the energy is emanating all around us. It gives us that spatial context that's required. But that's just the start. Energy is not enough. We start looking at signal behavior. Signal behavior right, tells us, is that Wi-Fi or is that Bluetooth? I can label the spectrum as I see it. Is it Wi-Fi with text? Is it Wi-Fi with streaming video? Is it a signal that's being interfered with that's actually strained? Or is it normal operation? All of this I can ascertain not by looking at the data, we're not looking at the data, we're actually just looking at the signal behavior. We're able right, to be able to tell not just where information is coming from, but what that signal is and what its behavior is. That allows us then to separate a complex scene into separate networks. So we can now make a decision. Do we want to join that network? Right? And we can start to see the underlying big picture. When we see when we have that information, it allows us to move from the era of broadcast through the era of isolation that we're in today to what we we'll call the era of learning, where we empower our systems with this information so that they can actually make a mistake. Right now, our policy is such that we try to avoid interference at all costs. Instead, if you have learning within your system, you can actually embrace the interference, use the interference as your feedback mechanism for learning. So as we go further into the next decade, right, it's not about just seven p drunk people at a boat party. Right? It's about 7.2 billion people right, interwoven through an interconnected network. That means the 30% of us that have common inter inter <coughs> internet access today are right, having a rich experience with our environment around us. But most importantly, the 70% who still don't have internet connectivity. Right? We'll get to zettabytes per month so that we can bring in everybody into the fold, so we can connect the rest of uh, the world, so anybody who wants a piece of information uh, can provide it. Thank you. <laughs>